Hi, everyone. We're here with Dan Alexander. We are talking about Ivana Trump's will. Um, Dan, let's just start with the fact that she didn't have that much money, really, all things considered, to leave to her kids. Yeah, $34 million in assets. That's an amount of money that most people would love to have. But for somebody who is married to a multi-billionaire and uh, has three adult children with him, you would expect maybe that she would be wealthier. Uh, Donald Trump, however, throughout his life has been famous for being stingy with uh, even those closest to him about their assets, uh, doling out a little bit. In this case, she had enough to buy herself a nice New York City townhouse and all of that, uh, but not giving away everything. So is it common for one's will to be in the public domain or, or how do you get a hold of these things? It's common once they pass away, of course. You know, people write these things when they're alive, and at that point, you never see them. Uh, after they pass away, usually it takes a little bit of time to land in the courts. But yes, ultimately, uh, people's wills and their probate documents do usually end up in local courts. In this case, Ivana's landed in the Miami-Dade County courts in their probate section. Which, which raises a good question, because if one has to die, it sounds like dying in Florida or at least being a resident of Florida is preferable to being a resident of New York? Because you mentioned in the article how many, how much time she spent in New York versus Florida versus San Tropez. Talk a little bit about that. Ivana had a nice life, you know? I mean, uh, summers in, you know, France and winters in Florida and fall and spring in Manhattan. Uh, but ultimately, you know, she declared her residence as Florida. Uh, that's not inconsistent with what the rest of her family has done. And it makes sense from a uh, savvy businesswoman that she was and being tied up with a family that's careful about their taxes. Florida does not have a state income tax, unlike New York. For the richest, highest earning residents, that can save them about 9% of their income per year. Uh, so a lot of people you know, count days, travel between various places, but ultimately say that they live in Florida, even if they're more famous for being in somewhere like New York, which is the case with Ivana. Right, where she spent two seasons, one season in Florida. And we're not going to get into that. If she'd been in France, that's a whole other, you, you're not allowed to disinherit your kids there. One other thing I think is fascinating, but this is, it does kind of uh, raise the children's net wealth, which is also not comparable to their dad's, is it? How much are they worth? No, not at all. So the last time that we looked at their net worth. Uh, we had Eric and Don Jr. tied at about $25 million. Again, it's a lot of money, but for guys who are, you know, around age 40 and have been working in their father's company for a long time and their father has billions of dollars worth of assets, you would probably expect more of those assets to have been passed down to them long ago and to have appreciated over time and for them to be worth at least hundreds of millions of dollars. That's not the case. If you want to study in contrasts, you can look at Ivanka, who married into another rich real estate family, probably not quite as rich as the Trump family, but nonetheless, the Kushners have plenty of assets. And in that family, Charlie Kushner, the father, started passing down assets to his children, including Jared, much earlier. The result is that in 2019, we estimated that Jared and Ivanka were worth about $375 million. So that's all to say that the $34 million of Ivana's that's coming down to that generation is not nothing for these guys. Uh, you know, it, it will make a real difference for them. And there's some that go to other people besides the kids, but the bulk of it will go to those three children. Right. Yeah, I believe there's a house that's going to the nanny who raised them. Yeah, that's, that's right. Dorothy Curry, uh, born in Ireland, uh, very you know religious woman who was uh, connected to them via another Irish nanny that they had had before, and uh, by all accounts, uh, became a member of the family. Uh, Eric Trump calls her a second mother to him. Ivana, in her book, noted that Eric and Dorothy uh, had a particularly special connection. Eric was born around the time that Dorothy joined the family. And so if you look at the will, yeah, most of it goes to the kids, but the condo in Florida, the one that she used to claim her residence goes to Dorothy Curry, uh, and also her dog, whose name is Tiger Trump, goes to Dorothy Curry. 
Well, that's good. At least you didn't leave it to the dog. I think Leona Helmsley was known for doing that. Can we remind people what um, Donald Trump's wealth is at this point and um, what the trajectory has been on that? Yeah, so we have him right now at $3.2 billion. Um, Donald Trump's wealth was larger before he became president. Uh, politics really ravaged the Trump business. Uh, it's not a good thing to turn off half of your potential hotel customers, to have tenants have to worry about their names being in the paper for paying the president of the United States. There are all these sort of complications that came with the presidency that weren't helpful for Trump. Now, the uh, interesting thing is that by uh, having January 6th and ultimately getting banned from Twitter, that might have been the only part of the presidency that really gave him a big boost because it gave him a business opportunity and allowed him to start the Trump Media and Technology Group, which its most famous company is Truth Social. Uh, and Truth Social is you know, basically a Twitter knockoff and uh, it's not large. Uh, Donald Trump himself has about 4 million followers on it, a tiny fraction of what he had on Twitter. But nonetheless, investors are excited about it. And when investors are excited about things, you can conjure money out of them. And right now, even if you just value Trump's stake at less than what the markets are paying, but what the smart investors are paying, and the smart investors meaning big money, firms on Wall Street and that sort of thing, uh, you get to over $700 million. So right now, that's his his single most valuable asset, believe it or not. Now, in the next year or two, uh, it wouldn't surprise anybody if that asset dropped to zero or went up to a couple of billion. So we'll stay tuned on that front. So, so Truth Social could go to zero. We've certainly seen that he's had a lot of international connections. Are those starting to resurrect again now that he doesn't have essentially the restrictions of being in office? There have been some small deals that have come out, uh, but I emphasize small. This is not something the licensing deals overseas always got more attention uh, than they made money. And that will continue to be true if he's able to kickstart that brand internationally. And it's only going to be limited to a few regions of the world. I think Middle East, uh, Eastern Europe, that sort of stuff. He's probably not going to have you know, big licensing ventures in the United States or in Western Europe. Uh, and so it could provide a little boost. Uh, though it probably won't become a massive part of his empire anytime in the rest of his life. Well, and we know the children will keep working. So thanks for joining us, Dan. Thank you.